everyone, this is Caroline and today I'm going to use these art supplies along with some watercolour and we're going to make a watercolour and washi tape face. I had this washi tape bought for me by somebody from my Amazon wish list and thought why not use this opportunity to use it for something exciting. When my washi tape arrived I decided to just do a trial sketch in my sketchbook and this is what I came up with which I'm quite pleased with. I love the green but I didn't want to do another green one because I don't like doing two of the same things but I love the way her eyes and hair coordinate. So I decided I didn't really want the face straight on. I wanted a little bit of a dynamic angle so here in my sketchbook I just did some really rough sketches to see which angle would look best, which hat style, which hairstyle. This was a bit too extreme. I love this one, a bit like a Medusa, but not the look I was really thinking of. So, having looked at them, this I liked, which was a bit cowgirlish. But this is the one I settled on. I thought that was quite nice. It gave the place to put the hair to the angle where the body was sloping to fill the page. Alright, so let's get on with the drawing. I drew this in pencil, but instead of inking in as I usually do, I decided to just lighten the pencil lines and paint using those as my guides. I, I could always come in with a fine liner later, but I just wanted to try it using no fine liner. That way the painting would be a bit more subtle, a bit more natural, I thought. Fiddling around, this is what I came up with. But I needed to lighten the pencil lines. One problem with watercolour, once you've painted over your pencil lines, you can't erase them. Now this is really good if it's in your sketchbook and you've done a pencil drawing and you don't want it to smudge or you don't want it to wear away. Just give it a run over with some watercolour and it seals it in. But that isn't a good thing when it comes to erasing your lines after you've painted. So just remember that if you want to erase your lines, do it before the watercolour or make them very, very pale, which is the method I'm going to use. At this point, when you're erasing most of the pencil lines, you can then tweak things a little bit and also have a look because sometimes some of the pencil lines were thinner than others. And when I erase a general area, some lines disappeared altogether. So I could redo those. So there we go. We're all ready for the paint. I love making a start with the paint and putting that paint down on the picture. I always start with the face. Now, I don't really know why I start with the face, but I do. And when you start a habit, it tends to stick. It's the same with the direction that I put my light in. I always put my light, well, most of the time, I put my light coming from the left. It's the way I started drawing and I don't particularly want to change it. I'm comfortable with that. But maybe that's not a good thing. Maybe I need to practice putting my light source on the other side or straight on. It looks a little bit weird at first when you just got the skin coming in because you can't really tell what it is where the lines are so pale and it looks like some sort of weird blob. A quick blast with the hairdryer and on we go to the next section. I've already darkened the little bit of the neck under the chin just to give it a start but we'll be coming in with other colours later. You may notice I've had my new brushes. I am so excited. My last brushes were dreadful. I had them second hand and they really weren't in very good condition at all. So I treated myself to some black tulip brushes from Zen Art and they are nice. I am thoroughly enjoying them. The only thing is they are going to take some getting used to because they're so efficient. They hold so much water. A few times I've splattered paint where I didn't want it to be because I didn't realise just how full the brush was of paint. But that's all just going to come with practice, I think. I'll keep at it. And I'll let you know how I get on. I'll do a review on my brushes, I think, to show you the different ways different brushes work and show you how my cat's tongue brush works and what it does. Mm, I'd never heard of a cat's tongue brush before. With this face, I decided to go a little darker. I always end up very pale because I'm frightened to put on too much colour in case it looks over the top. But then I'm always having the opposite problem of there's never enough pigment on the paper to really do the face justice. So, I bit the bullet, as you can see. 
And I've also accidentally painted over the white of the eye, as you can see. But that doesn't matter, because this is where my gouache paints come in. I'm going to paint over that little bit of the eye. And that way then, I can carry on and just pretend it's white paper. It took virtually two coats to get it back to white, but as the other parts darken, I think it'll look a lot lighter. And then I have to put the pupil in, so I think we'll be fine. Right, let's start with the hair. To have a change from the green hair I did last time, I decided to go with purple. I love purple. It's one of my favourite colours. I do have a lot of favourite colours. I tried to vary the amount of pigment in the water when I was doing this, so that the pieces that were coming from behind would have a little bit of shadow on them and the other parts would be light before I even worried about putting any more colours and layers on. One thing I'm enjoying with these brushes is the lines you can get in the hair. I didn't really need to put those lines in but I was really enjoying it so I started just to try it out, carried on. I really enjoyed drawing the swirly bits of the hair blowing in the wind. I'm finding I'm getting better but it does take a while to get your arm and your hand to actually make what looks like free flowing hair. I tend to be a little stiff no matter how much I've practiced and loosened up I still can't get a perfect, what would you call it, it's not a curve, a swirl, we'll call it a swirl. So the pencil lines weren't perfect and then it's much more difficult to go over them than with the brush. I suppose one answer would have been if I'd done a pale wash right over everything and then came on with just the brush to do these swirls on top of the back underwash then it would have been a little more natural but I think it's more a case of I'd have ended up with a complete disaster because my swirls wouldn't have been right, the hair would have been a bit of a mess. I do like the security of pencil lines. At two points during this painting I end up with an ugly session and I think this is starting to look really ugly now. Because of the edge of the hat, it looks like I've really splodged the paint badly and left bits out. And there's another bit coming on later with the eyes that wasn't brilliant either. But fortunately, if you keep working at it, as long as you don't overwork it, you can usually repair just about everything. Maybe it won't be perfect, but it won't be quite the disaster it was when you looked at it and thought, Oh, that needs work. You can see the bulldog clips I'm using. These are really great for when you're using your watercolour paper. You can clip your paper to a board and it'll hold it flat so you haven't got to wet it and stretch it and dry it out. You'll still get a few lumps and bumps but not as many as you would have. So I'm quite liking that. Alright, noses. I really struggle with noses. I'm going to make myself get really good with noses because... Ultimately, anything can be learned. It's just repetition and work. So I'm coming to the end of my sketchbook at the moment and I'm thinking of making my next sketchbook something that has a lot of noses in. I'll decide, am I going to draw a page full of noses a week or am I going to draw a nose a day? But I am going to make the effort to get more noses drawn so that they look better when I'm painting. Even though the eyes are the focus of a painting, I think the nose is quite prominent as well and it's so easy to make it look like a piggy nose or to make it look just, well, not right. We <laughs> call it not right. And mm, I wasn't happy with this nose. I think if the rest of the painting had been a bit more loose, for instance, the hair, I may have got away with it, but I really would like to tighten up that nose, make it look more like a real nose. Right, I think we put some blue in for the pupils. The only thing is, this is where I had that bit of a disaster where I didn't realise how much paint was actually on this brush and it made a terrible mess. So I tried drying it off and cleaning it off and decided that what I could do is try to bring the blue that had run off onto her cheeks as sort of a blotchy eyeliner, misty eyes. I don't think it worked perfectly but I think it's managed to patch it up a little bit. But I really did have trouble with those eyes today. One of my problems is I'm not patient and I don't always dry with the hairdryer before I move on to the next bit and that way then everything just runs into itself. Which again, if you're doing something loose, that's brilliant. If you're not, 
It's not brilliant. <laughs> right, as you can see, I forgot to paint a year or ear. So I painted it in later. It's quite dark now. I'm hoping it'll lighten up. So I've got my Payne's Grey and watered it down quite a lot to put some shade on this white hat. I love the way by putting dark colours onto something you can make it look white. Always impresses me. And if you can see just above the brim of the hat I am leaving a white line, a white strip. And that will be for my washi tape later as will the white that I've left on her dress. So we put in a little bit of shadow in. That was quite therapeutic, actually. I was a lot less accurate than I was with the hair, so I could just relax, enjoy myself, and splodge bits of grey where I thought they belonged. Right, now it's time to darken sections of the hair. I tried to, again, reinforce the look that some pieces of hair were coming from behind either the face or other pieces of hair or the hat, so it will be darker than the rest because of shadow. I darken up her eyebrows and take my life in my hands and darken her face. Oh, I was not comfortable doing that. It really worried me. I always tend to overreact by putting tons of water on the edges. At this point, I decided I needed a cup of coffee. So I went away, had a cup of coffee had a think and thought, how can I repair those eyes? They really don't look good. And I decided, I know, I'll paint the background instead. <laughs> Why not? Little bit of distraction tactics. And I quite enjoy painting backgrounds. I watered down the paint quite a lot and also added little bits of water before I got to certain areas. So it just made even better distinction of lights and darks made it look a bit like a very lightly clouded sky in the middle of the summer. These brushes were lovely because of the amount of water that they were holding. I didn't have to keep dipping my brush back into my paint, which up until now I have been dipping my paintbrush in the paints so often and still running out of paint before I got to the end of a section. It was drying off and then I get a line. So I really think I'm going to improve with these. I desperately needed them and I'm so glad I bought them. Right, I'm going to have to turn her upside down in a minute. I'm sure she won't mind. Normally, I wouldn't do this. I'd think, for the camera, I'll keep it up the right way. I won't smudge that with my arm and then I smudge it with my arm. So this time I decided to go for it, turn it upside down and hope that you could put up with me painting something upside down. And there she is, back up the other way. You can see now the variation in the amount of pigment on the background, which really does look like a lovely summer sky. All right, let's try fixing these eyes again. The number of times I fix these eyes. <laughs> As you can see, I forgot again. My brush was so full of paint. And I think a little bit more dark, but some pink on now. I was just going to go skin tone to pink to blue to purple. But I don't know, I wasn't happy with it. It was hiding too much of the pink, the blushy colour on the cheeks and inside the eye socket. So I decided to put more pink on. She looks a little intense. She, I think there's a fine line between ethereal and miserable. And I'm not sure I've got the right side of that line to make her look ethereal in the wind. She's certainly not laugh a minute, is she? Right, a little bit of pink in her ear, if you're Welsh, or ear, if you're not. I'm going to put my paints away now and try to do what I can with my Posca pen, which is white, and my Pigma Micron markers. So a little bit of eyeliner really changes things. I love it when I add eyeliner. A little bit of a line around the pupils and some other little lines. I'm never sure whether to draw those little lines in the pupils. I think, okay, I will, and then think, I wish I hadn't. Some eyelashes. I don't put many on the bottom anymore. I used to. They looked very much like false eyelashes. But now I only do a few on the bottom. Do a little bit of lining on the eyebrows and some shines in the eyes. Always brings the eyes to life when you do that. 
Right, I'm going to draw around the edges of where I want the washi tape to go because you can see the lines through the washi tape but my eyes are not brilliant so rather than just try to see the edges of where the paint is or the pencil lines I do a nice thick black line. Pop your washi tape onto where you want it to be make sure you have an overlap everywhere you need it to be and then cut out with a little blade. If you're a bit clumsy or if you're not 18 then I really suggest that you get somebody to do this bit for you because it could cause a really nasty accident. So far I haven't cut myself while cutting washi tape but there's always a first time. So I do the sleeves before I do the main body of the dress. You can just go right across the sleeves and the dress but I think it's good to try to keep the lines even though the washi tape has no continuity it's good to keep the lines going in a fairly natural direction as to the way the fabric would be going. Right, you're cutting out the scallops and the shoulders. And this is a great way of doing this. You end up with a really detailed dress or whatever it is you're going to use for very little effort. Cut along where the washi tape is on the edge too and take that off. I'm happy with that so far so I'm now going to get out my Faber Castle watercolour pencils and just do a little bit of line edging. Now I don't want to do a dark purple just yet. I'm using this sort of lighter ready purple colour because I don't want anything too intense against the purple. I love the way this really brings out the swirls of the hair so much more than when it's just watercolour. When I first started doing watercolours, I thought, oh, I just stick with watercolour. I don't want to do mixed media, but it really does make a big difference if you add at least one other medium. I always end up using either Posca pens or my fine liners. I usually end up mixing my watercolour with watercolour pencils. I just think it brings it to life. Right, I think we need to draw some lines under this hat. So you can clearly see where the hat ends and the hair begins. Ah, we'll go right around the hat too. Why not? There, that brings that forward. I think that pops much more now it's got a dark edge on it. And it's a little bit of extra darkening on the sides of the body where the shadow would be. And now I'm going to go around the edges of the dress with this black just to make it stand out a little more and also it hides the edges if I've gone a little bit wonky. But don't tell anybody. That's our secret. Right, time to put some strands of hair in. At first I thought I'll do this quite haphazardly, but then it wasn't working for me. I thought, no, I need to take my time and do this a little more carefully. Which I did, and I'm glad I did now and spent the time doing that because I think it looks a lot more artistic than just wild crazy lines that didn't seem to belong anywhere in particular. Oh yes, that's coming along nicely. Another advantage with using a pencil like this is you can make the ends of the hair really whip into a very fine point, which is much more difficult I find with watercolour. Right, let's just darken around the eyes a little bit more. I think anything that draws attention to the eyes can only be a good thing and the darker you make it around the eyes the better the attention is drawn to the eyes because of the contrast between the colour and the white. I think we'll just darken under the chin and the lips. A couple of lines. Right, sign it and we're done. 
But we're not quite done, are we? Because now for one of the best bits of watercolour, let's take off the washi tape. Now you can see the washi tape is taking some of the surface of the paper off. Oops, it's stuck underneath the dress there, the edge of the dress. So it'll come from this direction, see if it helps. If you want to avoid any paper being taken off with the washi tape, just warm it up with your hairdryer just for a few seconds and it'll come off a lot better. So there we go, I'm finished and I'm quite pleased with that. I'm pleased with the washi tape and I love the look on it where all these lines are going in the one direction and the fact that the hat and the dress match and tie in, make it stand together as a whole image. If you've enjoyed this video then please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and that way when you ring the little bell you'll get to know whenever I put out any new content or go live. Don't forget, draw every day and have fun. Bye!